Um, so that's the lineup for tonight. Um, great show. And as I said, it's very much an Indiana to California connection. I don't know if you know this or not, but I moved from Southern California, from Orange County to Indiana. And I am not the only one to do that. Well, my wife and I are not the only ones to do that. Billy here, welcome to the show. Thank you. Uh, and you, sir, I have to ask a question. Sure. Why in the world did you move from California to Indiana? Because you just moved last fall, right? A uh, year and a half ago, actually. Oh, so a year and a half ago. Uh, okay. Yeah, it was uh, July 2020 we moved here. Uh, we were just sick of all the nice weather. You know, <laughs> palm trees, sun, I, I couldn't I, handle it anymore. Yeah, it's just, and, and just not enough snow, and it was not cold enough. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I, just, I love those negative seven degree nights. They're my favorite. <laughs> So it's funny, my, my wife and I, we pull up to 1205 the first time that we're here, and uh, our second time we were here, I think it was, and we park right behind this car and we see a, a Disney annual pass holder sticker on the car in front of us. Like, wait a minute, that's really weird. It's Disneyland, not Disney World, Disneyland. And uh, lo and behold, we ended up meeting fine folks who moved from uh, California to Indiana. And the nice part is, he's a mixologist. So we got that going for us. All right, you were making the uh, Ring of Fire. Yeah, so uh, Ring of Fire was a, was a drink that um, I came up with uh, a couple months ago when we started talking about uh, the tiki menu here. Um, good friends with all the bartenders and with Nolan. So um, wanted to do something that was tropical in essence, but maybe just a little different than your typical rum and um, orange juice, pineapple juice, and things like that. So kind of landed with uh, 1205's uh, gin and their rhubarb liqueur um, and strawberry. And threw a little bit of coconut in there, some cinnamon, and absolutely loved it, so. All right, but let's pour so, one up, man. All right, get us going. First thing we're gonna do, we're gonna do uh, two heaping bar spoons of strawberry preserves. Okay, now that one, as I'm sitting here the other night, I'm watching them make the cocktail, and I see the back of this jar, and I see them scoop it out, and I'm like, that looks like strawberry jelly. Um, so how did that make it into a tiki cocktail? So I wanted something that was concentrated in flavor, and uh, strawberry preserves really do that. It, any preserve is going to really concentrate down the flavor. It's going to add some sweetness, but not be overpowering like a jam or a jelly. I uh, really wanted the essence of the strawberry in there, so... That's where we went with it. It's, it's awesome. So I can't argue yeah. with that's for sure. All right. So once we do the uh, strawberry reserves, we are going to do half an ounce of cinnamon syrup. This is just a uh, one to one cinnamon syrup. We're going to bring up the cinnamon to boil with, in water, equal parts uh, uh, sugar. And so we go half an ounce of cinnamon syrup. And then I always like to do the uh, cocoa reel. Um, after the syrup, just because it's a little thicker, it's a little hard to get out of the uh, out of the jigger if you don't. But what's really nice is then you can lick the inside of the jigger to get the coconut. Yeah. Oh yeah, wait, did I say that part out loud? I mean, my it, bad. Here you go. I got I got more jiggers <laughs> back here. <laughs> so all right, so we got half an ounce of uh, cinnamon syrup. We got half an ounce of the cocoa reel. We're gonna go three quarters of an ounce of lime juice. That is a lot of lime juice, man. <laughs> You know, there's a, so, so the, I mean, in that bottle, not in, oh, not yeah. in the oh, cocktail. I was say, it's actually kind of a bit of, a bit of lime juice in there as well. Um, but you do want to cut through a lot of the sugars. The cocoa, the cocoa reel is going to be uh, pretty sweet. Cinnamon syrup, the strawberry. Right. So you want it to be able to hold, hold its own place in there without really overpowering it. Now, this stuff is like the special sauce. Exactly. So oh, 1205 man. rhubarb liqueur. It is um, bitter. It's a little dry. It's not super strong, but it does have, add a really great flavor to it. So we're gonna do half an ounce of the uh, rhubarb. Yeah, first time I had that stuff, that was, yep, bottle's coming home with me. That, was, <laughs> that stuff's amazing. Let me go one and a half ounces of their gin. Now the gin is not your typical London dry gin. It is an American style gin. Mm -hmm. If you can't find this where you live, um, something like Aviator would be pretty close to it. Uh, this is a little bit more citrusy. I really like it. So that's it for that. Let me throw some ice in here. I'm so excited. It's first time in, uh, what, since September, I've actually been able to have the cocktail <laughs> that we made for the night. Now, the one thing with 
the preserves is you really have to shake it. So you really get a good hard shake on this one. And then we're gonna ice in the glass here. Ice everywhere. Oh, run away, run away. Yes. <laughs> and then we're just gonna do a, a double strain of this. We do wanna get uh, as much of the preserve that's kind of hanging out there at the end. We do you wanna get rid of some of that? I'm doing this backwards, actually. I'm gonna do it right handed. <laughs> well, <laughs> welcome to the show. Yes, I'm doing it left handed tonight, too. Exactly. <laughs> so you have to be ambidextrous in this. Yeah, whole time. it does pour out a little slow because, again, the preserves and the, and the cocoa reel will keep it from uh, pouring out really slow tonight. Yeah, if I were trying this at home, I just, I, I, I just don't know. Uh, that's just me. But he's a professional. He knows yeah. what he's doing. <laughs> I'm just going to dump it instead. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see anything. I'll edit that part out. <laughs> nice. <laughs> this is uh, Indiana's finest on the, uh, on the preserves here. Yeah, it is. Made right here in Indiana. That's awesome. And we're just going to garnish it with the cinnamon stick. In the middle. Get you a straw here. I forgot to bring my glass straw. <sighs> And there we go. All right. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. That is and a fire. I'm going to try this one because, you know, I haven't tried one yet. And if you believe that. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. That is a tasty cocktail. Um, so you are, you helped out putting together the, the tiki menu here yep. for this month. So what, what was your inspiration in putting the, these cocktails together? What, what made you bring these different drinks together? Yeah, so I mean, the whole menu was a collaboration between uh, all of the bartenders here um, and Nolan. Nolan was was here for it as well, and we just we sat around for a few hours and we had ideas that we had all been sitting on, made some cocktails, had a great time, tasted everything, um, kind of narrowed it down to the current menu. I think we had a few extras that didn't make the cut, so. Well, I like you guys have gotten, you have some of the originals. You've got the classics, like a painkiller. You've got Mai Tai. Um, very good. Had, you know, I've been here. I had to try them all, you know. Um, well, with the exception of the, of the getting laid, that's a vodka-based um, tiki drink. Um, yeah, I'm not big on the vodka side, but. You know, I think, a, I think a large part of it was trying to honor the classics, but also bring 1205 spirit into it. Right. Um, you know, the vibe here at the bar is a lot different than uh, most bars I've been to. So they have their way of doing things and it really comes across in this menu, I think. Well, and the spirits are great. And you've, you know, there's what, um, how many different cocktails are there on the menu? Oh, so on the menu, we've got one. Two, yeah, I, was, I was, wasn't gonna count those myself, uh, but. Uh, <laughs> so there's, so there's so nine, maybe you knew. <laughs> yeah, so we got nine tiki drinks on the menu. So nine drinks, okay. And uh, well, the Sazerac, that's obviously a, a staple there, but banana hammock, the bring of fire, which we've gotten. So you've got a, and the dirty banana, a couple of uh, banana ones. That Polynesian passion, also one you use with the rhubarb um, uh, syrup. Yeah. It's very good. So how did you, um, how do you find mixing with these spirits as opposed to other spirits that you've mixed with? Well, I think, you know, a large part of mixing with these spirits versus, you know, say, a, you know, a plantation or, you know, I mean, even like a, a diplomatic or an El Dorado rum or a beef eater or a Tanqueray gin, any of those, um, they have their own unique flavors to them. Um, the 1205 rum is a very, uh, it has, it, it almost has that Jamaican funk without it actually being a Jamaican rum. Um, like I said, the gin is an American style gin, so it's a little more citrus forward, not as dry. Vodka, same thing. The bourbon is just absolutely fantastic. So, yeah. So I think when it comes to drink creation with them, you really have to take the individual flavors of the spirits and not the right. not the pun intended spirit of the spirit itself. So, yeah, and that's because uh, each of these are, are very good. Um, I've had 
a few of the spirits as well. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, that just always made me wonder how you take something like a Mai Tai and bring in the, the spirit, a uh, craft Absolutely. spirit. Um, like Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and with a Mai Tai, you know, you, you kind of expect a certain drink. And when you start swapping out the spirits and you, you know, say you're, you're removing like a Smith and Cross and adding something like the, the 1205 rum, it definitely can change the profile. So, um, without a doubt. And the 1205, we're going to uh, rum, we're going to talk more with Nolan about that here in a little bit. Um, but thanks, man. This is an awesome cocktail. Well, thank you. Very happy with the menu that you put together. Um, uh, my wife may not be happy because I may be here more often than she would like. <laughs> but I'll have to see if I can bring her along. Um, at any rate, so thank you very much and uh, mahalo. Oh, thank you. And, and I'm glad you moved from California to Indiana. So are we. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Crazy, crazy, crazy. <laughs> I don't know who these people are that moved from California to Indiana. <laughs>